Yo, what's up, man? It's the one and only hip hop gamer, chilling here in cold ass Boston, PAX East 2015. I got my man Frank with me. You know what I'm saying? He's leading the charge. He's leading the charge with Alienware. You know what I'm saying? Now, first off, usually when I talk to people, I give them the belt a little later on during the interview. But because of what you do and what you've done and the passion you have for it and this big ass truck that I wish I had, word up. It'll be an honor for you to hip hop game a hot 97 right. GameStop belt. You know what I'm saying? So now we ready to get it popping. Frank, the first thing I want to ask you is your passion. Like, what was that moment that made you realize you want to be a part of this industry? And how has Alienware helped you reach the community and take this industry to a new level? You know, I, I wish I could say I've been doing this for so long that um, it was a passion of gaming or anything. Quite honestly, I was 17 years old and I, I needed a job. And uh, somebody told me that there was these two, uh, these three guys that had built a gaming company and we were tiny back then. Nobody even knew what Alienware was. And they needed somebody to test the computers out. Wow. And that was it. And, then, and the rest is history. I was a gamer. I love technology. I'm like, wow, this sounds like perfect for me. And that was back in 1998. And now look at this. It's just unbelievable. Wow, back in 98? That's cr oh my god. Alright. Okay, now I got I got all these questions. Alright. So the first so the first question is this, right? With Alienware, what was the goal or the initial goal for Alienware as a brand within this community? What did you want to convey to the you know gamers about this brand and how important is it for you to get that message across to them when you're selling these products? So i I mean we started off with a really simple idea. At the time when we started the company, it was you had a 16-bit DOS operating system, you had a Windows 32-bit operating system, you had 2D cards, 3D cards, 2D sound cards, 3D sound or DOS sound card. It was a disaster, and you basically had to be like an IT pro to figure out how to get a game to work on your computer. So, uh, two original guys figured out, you know what? There's got to be people out there that just want a system that's turnkey that'll play every game that's out there, and they don't have to be a, an IT professional to, you know, just to figure this stuff out. So they started building. They were gamers themselves they started building that product sending it out to magazines for review and wow there's happened to be a ton of people out there that uh, actually want exactly that they just want something that's turnkey they don't have the time to, to tinker with it I mean if you have the time you can you can always build the DIY better than anybody else out there is gonna be able to build it for you that's not who we're trying to sell to at all for us it's about folks that just want to play games they don't want to have to deal with all the headaches they want support whenever you know something does go wrong and that's what we're focused on so when you think about what matters most about the type of product that Alienware is building, it's around giving you great gaming performance, but then giving you a quality product that is not going to fail, it's not going to give you issues. So if you look at our the way we design our desktops and notebooks, the quality processes, the uh, materials that we use, everything, it's the best of the best. It's solid, it doesn't feel flimsy, it doesn't feel cheap. Everything has been designed to be the absolute best in the industry. You know, sometimes that may be a little bit thicker notebook, sometimes that may cost you a little bit of performance, at the ultra ultra high end you'll be able to deliver that experience but we know that's why people come to us is because they want something that's turnkey that's why they came to us the first day we opened up and that's what we've been delivering ever since yo I virtual reality is the big talk you know what I'm saying everybody got a like new device oculus oculus is actually right over there now Palmer lucky that's my guy you know what I'm saying that's my dude shout out to my man Palmer like I love his energy I love what he's about just like how you're passionate now their focus is on the PC world you know with their V are what has the res or the reception so to speak but what is your goal with VR with the Alienware platform like how are you guys making that work like designing your platform so that it can help boost VR and take VR to another level where that needs to go so to deliver really good quality VR I mean the stuff that's not gonna make you sick you know yeah, the stuff that yeah. that talk is, about it <laughs> that's gonna you're gonna walk out and you're gonna feel like you were really transported to a a different world whatever that world is in front of your eyes you need performance and that's what we've been doing longer than anybody else I mean we've been doing this for almost two decades now so we have been working with the team at oculus so Brendan Par uh, Palmer's partner at oculus we we're also working with the steam VR solution so they made some announcements earlier this week HTC and steam are working together on a VR solution that's just amazing so we're looking at all the different solutions and what you'll see from us is we're gonna go with the absolute best one or the best one or two that are out there we'll validate them we'll pair them with 
with our uh, our systems, and we're going to design the experience like we design our PCs around games to give you the absolute best experience. So when we come out, we're going to come out. We're going to say, look, this machine is going to give you this type of VR experience. It's going to be tested, tried and true. Um, if that's Oculus, it'll be tested with them and tried and true and offered with them. If it's with uh, HTC and Steam VR, you'll know that it's going to be a turnkey solution. It's going to work reliably out of the box. You're not going to get sick. It's going to look beautiful. So we're pretty much agnostic, but we're only agnostic to the best solutions. We're not going to pick up anything that's inferior. Yo, I love your standards. I love that this dude got standards when it comes to your passion. I'll be trying to tell people that shit all the time. I get hyped. All right. Now, another question that I have, and I think this is very deep. I'm not sure if you was even asked this question before, but I tell people a lot that's number one in their field. If you're number one in your field, where else can you go? Because you're already number one. So how do you get that same feeling back to be able to come from the ground up and be, become number one again in another area? Have you guys ever thought about, because I love the Alienware design, the logo, I love the culture behind it. Have you guys ever thought about doing Alienware music, Alienware clothing, it, like just making it a, more of a global brand for anything instead of only the core when it comes to the PC and the gaming and stuff like that. Has has that even came about in discussion? All the time. Seriously? All the time. I, yo, talk about that shit. Let's go. All the time. Um, the I love the logo. That's what you see. The, the reason you don't see more stuff Alienware branded is because there are three basic things that we have to do before we put our logo on something. Number one, it's got to be performance. If we can't differentiate in performance in a category, it's not worthy of our logo. It's got to be ultra high quality. And if they can't deliver that, it's not going to get worthy of our logo. Damn, that's real. And it's got to be disruptive and innovative. So, you know, we look at categories like, you know, um, clothing and all these other things that we could do. And if we, because we're not the experts necessarily in those categories, don't see a crystal clear opportunity to be able to deliver on one of those three brand tenants, we don't invest in the category. We have a brand that is a promise to people that's going to stand for those three things. When you buy an Alienware branded product, you expect the best of the best in those three categories. If we ever fail to deliver that, then we're not meeting up to our promise. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't do cool things in all these other categories. Look, you're right. We are number one in a lot of things that we do, and we're number one in desktops and number one in notebooks. So how do you find a new, a new area to keep you kind of competitive and humble? You get into the console space and you start building steam machines. Yeah, yeah. I see I see you. I see yeah, you. We're the underdog. We've got like yeah. tiny nothing market share. So we got big, big companies that we're playing up against and okay. we're going in and you know, we, we partnered with Valve. We think we have the most disruptive solution that's out there. It gives you more games than anybody else. It performs better than any other solution that's out there. It's at a really disruptive price point, $479. It's got a game pad that's never been seen before today. It's revolutionary. Where is it? I saw, wait, who? Oh, damn. <laughs> I wish there was, a, yeah, we gotta see that game pad. Okay. Yeah, so we got a bunch of stations set up over here for you guys to play with them and check them out. Okay. Valve just revealed it three days ago at GDC. Yeah. So this is the first time anybody's able to actually play games with the gamepad. We got a bunch of games set up over here at PAX. The response has been great. You know, if you want to play, if you want the familiarity that you've had on any other gamepad you've ever played with before, you're, you're not going to like it. That's not what this is. This is a revolutionary gamepad. It lets you play games with more precision than any other gamepad that's ever been developed before. and allows you to play games that nobody's been able to bring over to a TV or no console before. So it's different. You got to spend a little while learning it, maybe five or ten minutes. But once you learn it and you come to it with an open mind, people are going to have a hard time letting it go. Yo, last question. Now, this question right here, is, I think it's perfect for you. So a lot of people has been looking at this Windows 10, right, and looking at Xbox. And there's just been a big announcement that a lot, like more than normal, but a lot of first-party Microsoft titles is going to be coming to PC as well. Now, before, that wasn't the case because they had to make a sale for the Xbox One, so they had to keep some things that's only there so they could sell there. Now, currently, right now, obviously, PS4 is in the lead when it comes to the console race, so I'm not saying Microsoft is abandoning their Xbox One, but this move to bring mostly all, if not all, first-party games to the PC, that's kind of saying that they're planning for the future to where Microsoft may leave the console business and go PC only with the games that they've already made. If so, that's some quality shit right there. Absolutely. 
quality enough that I think Alienware, if there was an opportunity for Microsoft and Alienware to work together in some sort of capacity, do you think that that's even a realistic situation for you guys where if Microsoft decided to go PC only and leave the console business alone and bring all their game franchises to the PC and have it powered by Alienware and allow you guys to lead that march? I, What's up with that? I, I think it's definitely a possibility. Um, you know, I'm not ready to reveal or announce anything that may be going on with that around right now. But um, you know, if you look at Microsoft, you know, they've done a lot of things exceptionally well, and they've had a couple of hiccups here and there. But the one thing that has pretty much been consistently done very well has been what they've done with the Xbox. And I think it's very smart for them to take that asset and take, you know, that loyalty that they have around the Xbox product line and ecosystem and extend that over to the PC. And I think what you're going to see is, um, you're, you're already seeing it, you're seeing a lot of convergence between console and PC. Yes. The new consoles, PlayStation and Xbox, are using PC architecture. Big time. The AMD x86 architecture. Yeah. Well, PCs have obviously been using that forever, right? Now you're seeing traditional PCs going into the living room where the consoles have pretty much dominated. I think yeah. very soon here, and a lot of it's because of the effort of what we've been doing, the other Steam Machine partners and Valve, those lines are not going to be, those board are not going to be as defined as they are right now. We're not going to be talking about consoles and PCs in the years like we've been talking about them for the last 20 years. It's just going to be gaming. And you're going to game anywhere, you're going to game everywhere. That's a really big opportunity for everybody. You're seeing that with some of the stuff that Steam's doing, right? They're extending Steam to TVs, to VR, to a bunch of other areas. Microsoft's kind of doing the same thing. Look, at the end of the day, we're gamers. What we play on, in my opinion, is not nearly as important as what we're playing. Exactly. We play on it because that's the only way we can play what we want to play. Yeah. But ideally, if we can have no boundaries and we can do play any game we want on every device we want, everywhere we want, that would be the perfect world for all of us. And I think that's finally happening. Yo, dude. Yo. <laughs> yo, yo. This has been legendary, man. So look, we wrapping it up right now. Got the Alienware truck. It's crazy. I just want to say one love and God bless. Frank, yo, it's an honor, man. Seriously, thank you so much. And just because of who he is, I'm going to just leave it with this. What was the first game you ever remember playing, and how did you feel when you played it? I played Lynx 386 wow. at EVGA resolution, Whoa. and I don't even play golf, but it was the most graphically beautiful game I could find at the time. And back then, you know, you flipped over huge boxes on the retail shelf, and uh, you had flop or you had, you had um, three and a half inch floppy disks and shit. And uh, I remember turning around and saying, "That's the most beautiful game I've ever seen. Let me go buy that. I've never played golf in my entire life, but it was the most beautiful game, so I bought that. And I think the next game I played was Test Drive. That was like the next most beautiful game I had seen at the time. So I bought those games, and yeah, those are the first two games I ever played on the PC. This is like, man, you're dating me. I don't want to even say how long ago. I know you say that. Cool. So we all let you go, man. Hip Hop Gamer Hot 97. Shout out to Critical Eye holding it down, holding the camera. I know this is a long interview, but I appreciate you. Much love, dog. This is crazy, man. Alienware, man. Go get it. I'm taking this belt. Peace. And he's taking the belt. Peace.